with you, David. And it's interesting, yeah, just reading your full job title, Head of Demography, Immigration and Integration. Let's just start with the demography element of this, because post-Brexit, I think a lot of people wrongly, obviously, thought, oh, well, you know, we're going to see lower immigration and potentially fewer people, shall I say, ethnic minorities. But actually, that's not the case, is it? No. Uh, in the short term, immigration has risen quite sharply. I mean, European immigration has fallen. So to that extent, you could say the ending of free movement is starting to have an effect. But that's been um, obviously kind of more than compensated for by the big increase in non-EU immigration. But I do think it is worth pointing out that quite a lot of this will be a one-off. I mean, quite a lot of this, particularly the big surge, so the two really big surges are students and um, refugees, various different kinds of refugees. Um, so both of those are, are probably um, not going to be repeated. Uh, the, the student thing is, is partly a kind of post-COVID catch-up. Um, also, a huge amount of this immigration is short-term. Um, which is which is what you know me and various other uh, people who look at immigration have, have have always been arguing. We should have much more focus on short term immigration and uh, and making it harder for people to get permanent settlement and, and become mm -hmm. citizens. Yeah, you know, we want to remain an open country. Yeah. There are legitimate economic um, requirements for immigration, but you know, but and most work migrants that are coming, all student migrants, most work migrants. Uh, are on are on visas and they go okay. home after a period. Um, uh, there's, there's a so... lot. There. I'm just I'm just going to pause there, David, because I want to return to some of that stuff as we as we drill yeah. further down. But I, I'm going to throw it over now to Councillor Danny Brooks from Skegness Town Council because I wanted to get your take on, frankly, where do we put all these people and the resources that local councils now having to deal with this? It's one thing talking about the demography of it all and the ethnic makeup and all of that stuff, but actually, when it comes to just the sheer numbers. We are asking, can Britain cope? Can your council cope with this level of net migration? I don't think we can cope with it. Uh, if you ask any resident of Skegness now if they've got a dentist, I would say probably 50% haven't and can't get dental appointments. Uh, it's two weeks now to wait for a doctor's appointment. Uh, the hospitals, uh, I'm not sure on the waiting list, but can we cope? I don't think we can cope, no. OK, so you're already seeing public services stretch, because that's a big thing for a lot of people, whether it's temporary or otherwise. The fact is that, at least for a period of time, people will be struggling, in your view, Danny, to do basic things like get a health checkup, get on uh, the social housing ladder, if you want to call it that. Oh, for definite. I, I think the, uh, the social housing waiting list in Skegness is probably 10 years long. Uh, so you add to that... Uh, you know, where do our uh, our residents, their children, get to get anywhere to live? Uh, doctors are in short right? so are dentists. It's it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And it's important to know, and it is very important to know, especially when it comes to these specific figures, that they have been massively exacerbated by people that we've openly, absolutely, 100% thrown our doors open to, Ukrainian population, the Afghan population, many people thinking that we quite rightly have a duty to those people. But David, another element of your fantastic job title, by the way, is integration, yeah. integration uh, policy exchange. And some people are concerned that we're moving too fast, too quickly with these numbers, and there isn't enough integration taking place. We hear the figures that, oh, well, a city the size of Bradford might be coming every single year. Bradford is a good case example, because that is a city where a lot of people wonder whether or not integration has worked. Yeah, I think these are, are perfectly good and legitimate questions. Um, I mean, it, obviously, some groups of people are easier to integrate than others. You know, if you're importing, I don't know, you know, doctors from Slovenia, um, you know, it's a, it's a different kettle of fish from people you know, coming from a very different kind of culture. Um, and, uh, I mean, the, I mean, one of, one of the ways, I think, in which you know, refugee migration, and and as we were saying earlier, I mean, there's a peculiarly large bulk of it in, in this year, and, and much of it, to be fair, as it were, it is kind of legitimate refugee. You know, it, it's, in a sense, kind of inverted commas, popular refugee immigration. The Ukraine, the 
Hong Kong, the, the Afghans from the crisis in mm. August 21, um, a, a relatively small proportion is actually the, 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 the channel where call. people like, reasonably, um, you know, find, you know, very, okay. very irritating and, and puzzling. But sponsorship, I think, is the answer. I mean, you get around the integration problem when it comes to refugees, if a, if a higher proportion of our kind of normal refugee intake is done through, you know, families and organisations sponsoring people, so could that then that brings with it a kind of automatic integration into yeah. British society. Uh, OK, and Danny, I'll throw it over to you, because something, again, that we're going to be talking about a bit later on is the fact that, well, look, we do now have anomaly or otherwise record levels of both legal and illegal immigration into this country. And, Danny, on that issue, you are already struggling to cope, aren't you, when it comes to things like housing the channel migrants? Uh, definitely. I mean, 10 months ago, uh, uh, we got some asylum seekers in three of our hotels. Uh, we was told, that's it, there will be no more, and they're only here for three months. So 10 months later, they're still here, and they've now opened three more hotels, took three more hotels over. So that's six now. 3% uh, of the population is it's increased by. We can't manage these. We haven't got the uh, infrastructure for it. Uh, you know, there's some, there's some uh, refugees that you've got to help, and, and, and rightly so. But I just think a lot of them are economic migrants.